Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Vanifier11 and welcome to an ARK Survival Evolved news video. Yes, this is my first one and for those of you guys that have been around my channel and you guys just watched the Minecraft here, I strongly encourage you guys to check out this series, uh, ARK Survival. For those of you that don't know what it is, it is basically H1Z1 uh, plus GTA plus some building game. <laughs> I like how Mousecraft uh, described it. That's how he described it. Anyways, um, I have a bunch of information here from the Arc Digest issue 3 that just came out today on Wednesday, May 27th. And um, so let's go ahead and hop into it. So basically this one, the new features, there isn't really much new features since they're trying to make it as bug free as possible going to early access, which is coming out June 2nd. Um, so this is getting our dinosaur AI all sorted, stress testing servers, running through caves to ensure that they are ready for players, and flinging poop. Yep. Flinging poop. <laughs> um, but they have a bunch of new dino dossiers, and, uh, there's, uh, six of them. They've been releasing two a day. Um, for those of you that don't know what a dino dossier is, um, it's gonna be up on the screen, by the way. Um, but the dino dossiers are just basically little books that, uh, just explain some info about the dinosaurs that are into it. So this week, they have six of them so far. So let's go ahead and look at them. So the Ankylosaurus, he's a pretty cool-looking dinosaur. Um, he's a herbivore, and he's also very docile. Um, let's go ahead and read what he says. So in the wild, unlike many of the herd animals on the island, Ankylosaurus whatever tends to live in small family unions. Un units? Units. I believe they can afford to stick with smaller groups because of their incredibly thick skin for which they're named. Reckless carnivores are just as likely to hurt themselves on Ankylosaurus spikes as they are to get hit by its tail. So it seems like its spikes and its tail are going to be very, um, really ground, uh, really ground, uh, they're really dangerous. So despite not being the, uh, this not despite not being the among the largest what the heck despite not being among the largest of the island's herbivores the ankylosaurus is one of the, mo the more difficult creatures to take down its thick armored skin seems to make it more than a match for several of the mid-sized predators that would otherwise hunt it so domesticated without a doubt the best trait of a trained ankylosaurus is its normally dense tail the tail is powerful enough to swatter the resources laden laden <laughs> rocks of the island. I'm sorry, I can't read, guys. Um, but it sounds like the Ankylosaurus is going to be able to harvest rocks for you, which is really cool. And it also says one of the wealthier human tribes on the island utilizes a squad of Ankylosaurus in its mines and quarries. So it sounds like it's a mining monster. So that's really cool. We're going to have to get a couple of these guys when the game comes out. Anyways, next one is the... Oh, God. Carbonamis. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. But he's a herbivore, and he's also very defensive. He's one of the least aggressive creatures on the island. Were it not for the plethora of predators on the island, I'm certain it would spend its days basking in the sun, eating or sleeping. It uh, leads a simple, solitary life. Nevertheless, it seems to be one of the most peaceful animals I have yet encountered. With its slow walking speed, the only thing that keeps it safe are its surprisingly fast swim speed. So okay, this thing can swim fast, even though it walks slow. And its incredibly thick shell. I would not be surprised to see, uh, with, see a withdraw entirely into its shell and be completely safe from most predators. So its shell is very strong and it can also, so if you make it angry, don't go to the, uh, the water because it, it can swim fast. Um, domesticated, uh, swift swim rate, swift swim rate, there we go. Fairly high strength and lack of real threat makes it in a, uh, real aquatic mount for most coastal survivors who... Shy away from violence, it can carry its rider to the ocean's resources at fairly high speed, but are not particularly dangerous to tame. So that's cool. It's basically a. It's, it sounds like it's going to be useful as a boat. Um, it's not going to be hard. So it's going to be like a starting aquatic creature, which seems pretty cool. And uh, let's move on to the next one, which is the raptor. So the wild. Oh wait, let's see. So it's an aggressive carnivore. So it's an incredibly inc aggressive subspecies of the Eutraptor <laughs> found on the island. Um, it tends to travel in small hunting packs, attacking smaller prey with its sharp teeth or enlarged foreclaws. One of the faster creatures on the island, uh, 
often uses hit and run tactics against larger opponents. The large curved talon on the second toe of this subspecies seems particularly suited for attacking while jumping. So it sounds pretty dangerous. And it usually kill their prey with numerous slashings and leaving attacks in rapid sequence. So it sounds... Did it say that they hunt in a herd? I think they said that they hunt in a herd, right? Maybe not. <laughs> Anyways, it sounds like these things are pretty de uh, dangerous. Uh, domesticated, despite its normally aggressive nature, has become one of the most one of the main mounts for roaming bands or of raiders, as well as scouts for the larger collectives. Those who ride the raptors claim that they are difficult to tame, but fiercely loyal once they are. As a carnivore once tamed, they require a steady stream of meat to sustain them. So you are gonna have to feed your mounts, which is very cool. And it seems like I've seen in the trailer, which is playing in the background, that these guys like to, like, people ride on these things all the time. So, yeah. And watch out for the claw on the bottom. As you can see, it says caution down there in the bottom right, which is pretty cool. All right, let's go to the next one, which is the crook dial. So he's a, uh, a patient carnivore. So while among the island's water-based threats... The crocodile is a lot of what you might expect from a giant crocodile, a patient killing machine. It spends much of its days lazily waiting in the water for prey to walk near that. Said it is not opposed to scurrying onto land and pressing the issue when hungry. A good tactic for escaping many predators is a jump into the water, as most are slow swimmers. This is a bad tactic for escaping a crocodile, obviously as they are actually faster in the water than they are on land. So the, don't go in the water, it's just like the uh, turtle, or the, uh, yeah, the turtle thing. <laughs> so domesticated. Despite being river-dwelling creatures, the, the crocodiles seem quite at ease in the oceans. More than a few fishing communities use them as mounts simply to help fight off megalodons or to gain better access to the resources found within the reefs. So the, the, the communities in the fishing areas, they use these guys to fight off megalodons, which is really interesting. And uh, I'm interested to see how people use these guys. Anyways, next up is the Carnotolerus. I'm sorry I'm saying these names wrong, by the way. But he's an aggressive carnivore. Um, so he's an, an interesting creature that falls between medium and large predator. It lives primarily on flat, clear ground where it can capitalize on its speed. Additionally, it seems to have no qualms about running from larger predators instead of fighting. So it... If it, if it runs into a larger predator, it's just going to run, I guess. Uh, the horns of the thing, <laughs> the Carnotaurus, seems to be used more for fighting rival rivals than actually hunting. This doesn't mean the horns aren't dangerous, though. They could still eviscerate larger prey. I'm sorry, guys. I can't read today. It's, it's kind of late where I am right now recording this, so I do apologize. Um, it's one of the smaller and more compact of the large predators. If Tyrannosaurus is the lion of the island, uh, it would be certainly the cheetah. The real threat of the Carnotaurus, Carnotaurus is not being able to escape it once it see, sees you. So yeah, that's kind of scary. Uh, domesticated, it uh, fills a very specific role. Larger and almost as fast as a raptor, smaller but much faster than a, t and then a rex. Were it not for the creature's extremely long downtime after sprinting, it might be among the most capably balanced mounts. So it sounds like it's going to take a long time for it to regain its stamina after sprinting. So you do got to be careful about that if you do want to tame this thing, which is pretty interesting. All right, next, last one is the Phiomia. It's a skittish herbivore. In the wild, it's... Uh, is yet another herd animal on the island. They are small enough that almost any predator can bring them down, but large enough to provide plenty of meat, which is pretty cool. So we should see these guys getting hunted a lot. And I'm really excited for that, actually, in this game, is the relations between the dinosaurs and the animals. I think it's going to be really cool. Were it not for the protection of the herd and their instinct to run from any predator, the, these would almost certainly be hunted to extinction. So the only reason these guys are still around is because they have a herd and they run from everything. <laughs> Um, but the tusks and trunk make it especially suited to, to scavenging plant life from the ground. It uses its tusks to dig up loose plant life. Then it uses its stubby trunk to scoop the foliage in, up into its mouth. Uh, the adults often dig up food for their young. And watching a baby attempt to use its trunk can be quite amusing. So that's pretty cool. And uh, while it's completely... Oh, this is domesticated, by the way. While it's completely possible to ride uh, one around, they are 
<laughs> what does that say? They are a meager choice. They work very well, however, as a pack mules, and I've seen some communities keeping a herd of them around as livestock. They require protection, though, as they are terrible fighters. So that is interesting. Anyways, we have one more thing to do, and that's read the Q&A, which I think is the coolest part. So let's get into that. Survival Survivor Scrappy Bristol asks, Could you give a rundown on what is the normal thing to do for the first few hours of the game? And um, so the answer is, this is a great question. And to be honest, there's a lot of potential to what you could do when you first pop in. First things first, you get in, and here's what you have to make a decision. Do you want to stay in this area, potentially inhabited by other sur survivors, or do you want to make for the hills and begin your life on the Ark elsewhere? So it seems like the first decision you have to make is, what do you want to do? Do you want to stay in the area that could be inhabited by others, or do you want to flee and try to find your own little area? If you chose option one, we advise taking a few moments and looking at your surroundings. What is nearby? Who is nearby? Do you see the opportunity to attack anyone? You are... You are only equipped with your hands. These are great tools. Not only can you do that, use them to knock out players and potentially steal their gear, but you can also use them, use them as a way of gathering resources. Walk, walking up to trees and punching them will allow you to collect the thatch and wood which is necessary for the first tool you make. If, in, if instead you see a person, well, you might just be in luck. Consider using the prone or crouch, sneak up on them, and make minimal noise. And smack them. <laughs> if you successfully manage to take them out by being sneaky, hopefully you'll be rewarded with plenty of gear. If you die, well, I mean, sneaky isn't for everyone, and there are other options available to you. Now back to gathering. After you've collected the necessary resources for making a tool, you'll quickly progress through the early game. You'll start to gain resources more efficiently and in larger numbers. Decide on how you want to stat up your character and where you want to spend your first ingram points, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um... Picking up the first set of ingrams is very recommended as you'll want to have at least the bare necess necessities before you begin specializing. specializing. <laughs> Soon, you'll find that you are able to successfully craft better tools, weapons, campfires, and clothing. So it seems these ingrams are going to be very important for crafting better stuff. So where was I? Where was I? Uh, the be this begins your journey on the Ark in the first step of survival. Remember, whilst all this is going on, you need to assure that your character is well hydrated and fed. You can do this by picking berries off bushes, submerging into deep water, and or killing dinosaurs for their meat. So it seems if you de submerge into water, you drink it. That's cool. <clears throat> as well as collecting their hide to make a water skin. Now you've done the basics, basics, and you'll manage this fairly quickly. It's time to move on and look for a place where you'd like to build. You would, you would want to get your house set up as soon as possible for protection from other survivors, the dinosaurs, and the Ark, which can be very unforgiving for those unprepared. After you set up your first base with some storage options and a place to sleep, you may want to consider how you plan to specialize. Do you want to be a survivor who wants to hunt and tame beasts, or are you someone who prefers building grand villages? Do you want to explore and just travel across the Ark? There are plenty of paths you can take on your life, and the way you specialize will determine how effective you are in those rules. So that was a lot. Um, basically just explaining what you're going to do in the, fir in the first few hours of the game, which is very uh, good to know. And hopefully you guys did learn. I'm sorry that was so long, but I'm going to try to summarize these a little bit better. Anyways, Survivor Commander Panda 5 asks, Because dinosaurs fight each other, if two fight and one loses, will it, we find a death on the ground to harvest things from? Is it possible that a dinosaur can be knocked out by another dinosaur to make it easily tameable? And the answer is, this is something we have focused on very early on. We want our ecosystem to interact with one another. They'll fight each other, they'll get involved in battles occurring dif between different dinosaurs, if aggravated, and you can surely expect to find some dead carcasses around the, the Ark. As for taming an already knocked out dinosaur, if it wasn't knocked out by a person, you can be sure to have the ability to tame it for yourself. Uh, some dinos will apply torpidity with their attacks, such as the scorpion, I think. And there may be occasions where they've left an unconscious body untouched due to chasing something else or being killed themselves. So that's cool. So basically it's saying about the ecosystem, which I really said I liked, uh, dinosaurs are going to fight, and if a dinosaur does knock out another dinosaur, you can tame it. Just be careful because it might wake up. Um, will ARK support mod makers for the PC? Yes, without a doubt. We, we're all gamers at Studio Wildcard, and we love making games, and we love playing games. 
We will be providing complete support to mod makers when early access launches. We will launch our source code, our editor, which uses Unreal Engine 4, as well as the assets necessary. We're looking forward to see what you guys make. So they are going to have mod support, and I talked to Jake Hurst, who is a community manager. Um, he did tell me mods will be available day one. Well, you can mod the game day one. I don't, I don't think any mods are actually going to be available day one, but we'll see. And the last question on this page is, will it be possible to write a brontosaurus in water? Will brontosaurus steps break barricades, walls, doors? All the land creatures of the Ark are able to swim, however they're not very effective. They swim slower than they travel on land, and you have to keep in mind that their stamina and oxygen stat. If your dinosaur runs out of stamina or oxygen while swimming, you risk it traveling incredibly slowly and drowning or suffocating to death. Keep in mind that some land and Land creatures are better than others at swimming, such as the something Carbonamus. I think we just covered that guy. And others are as amphibious and do not require as much oxygen, such as the Sarcochocus. As for whether Brontosaurus will break structures, you could definitely see that happening. They are a passive creature, but if your house is in the way, they don't care. They'll be sure to step over it. Be careful as if you have any dinosaurs nearby who have been set to neutral or may even be beside the structure. You'll risk them fighting, and most often the brontosaurus will probably crush anything that picks a fight with it. So that is very interesting. It basically just tells you land animals can swim, but some are better than others. And you have to be careful of their oxygen and uh, stamina stat. And you also, uh, the brontosaurus don't care and will just go right through your structure. So be careful with your tame dinosaurs or else they're going to get mad and fight it. We have one more page, guys, and this is like the important page. Let's get into it. Survivor Moonlight 101 asks, Could you please dive more into the skill tree, specifically what attributes there will be to level up? So this answer uh, it has a bunch of detail, and I do recommend go reading this by yourself. Uh, I'm going to cover like the stats that aren't pretty much self-explanatory. So let's get into it. This has been asked a lot, so I guess it's time for us to share some details. As you level up via playing the game, you gain stat points and engram points. You'll be given one stat point per level and engram points which scale per level. This is a key part of Ark Survival Evolved as what you spend these points on determine the role you play. The stats you'll have available to you are as follows. Health, Stamina, Oxygen, Food, Water, Weight, Melee Damage, Movement Speed, Fortitude, Crafting Speed, and Torpor. So I'm going to put every description on the screen right now. So if you if you do want to, you can pause the video and read it. But health is just normal, just health. Stamina is pretty common in games. It's just how far you can run without you getting tired or like how much you can work before getting tired, such as that. Oxygen, this is an uncommon trait that you won't see in many games. Rivers, lagoons, water, under, underwater pools, and the ocean play a huge part in the arc. It's often a place of sanctuary or potentially a place of danger. These are times you'll find yourself diving to the bottom of a pool, riding on aquatic friends, or swimming across to escape a deadly predator, only to find yourself in the mouth of another <laughs> winky face. Increasing oxygen allows you to stay submerged for longer periods of time. Uh, there's also the food stat, which is pretty much in every survival game. You just gotta eat food so that you don't die. Water, this stats since some of the games is the same thing as food pretty much is to make sure you drink water so you don't dehydrate yourself and die. Uh, weight, uh, it says this is something that core to the game. Unlike many other survival games that are primarily slot based when it comes to inventory, Ark is not. Ark is a weight based game. This means you can hold as many materials as you like as long as you have the weight to withstand it. Weight is a very useful stat, though something to keep in mind is the more you carry, the slower you run and the lower you jump. When you reach a certain level of weight, you become encumbered, and you find yourself unable to do much. Uh, next up is melee damage. It's just how much damage your melee weapons do. Movement speed, which is also pretty um, common, I guess. But it's a key stat to the game, so I'll read it. It's used to determine how quickly a survivor can travel by foot. If it is, it is very useful in escaping, hunting, in fact, just about everything. It has great synergy with stamina. So you can make a... Really fast guy with a lot of stamina, and you can run forever, which is pretty cool, and I do like that. I might do that. <laughs> Next up is Fortitude. This is a very useful stat that not many may consider. Living life on the Ark, experience the weather and the ecosystem, you're at risk. Increasing Fortitude will help provide some resistance from the elements, as well as provide you some crucial resistance from Torpor, which we'll talk about later on. 
Fortitude is increased by one for each point you spend. So it sounds like weather and uh, ecosystems will mess with your body. So Fortitude will help, I guess, defend against that. Uh, crafting speed. This is a unique stat not seen in many games. So the last survivors, the opportunity to craft quicker. Uh, at first glance, you may think it's not as useful as the other ones. However, you might end up in a pinch where you have seconds to live and you really need to make a bow. Those points spent in crafting will definitely make all the difference. The difference between kill or be killed is also a fun trade to consider having on servers where you just want to build as quickly as possible and make many grand structures. All right. Last stat they're going to talk about here is Torpor, also known as Torpidity, is a stat which you'll not be able to increase. However, it is incredibly useful and very important that you watch your levels of Torpor. It is used to monitor whether your character becomes unconscious and how long it stays unconscious for. When you have a high amount of Torpor, you'll be knocked out and you have to wait for it to decrease before you can function again, though it decreases at a fairly rapid rate. As mentioned before, Fortitude provides resistance to Torpor in the sense that weapons, tools, or consumables may not provide as much. Uh, torpor is a key element when knocking out players and dinosaurs. If you find that your Torpor is increasing, you better consider gobbling some stim berries or some stimulant otherwise find yourself potentially in grave danger. That's very interesting. And they basically tell you what you're going to need to not get knocked out yourself because you can be quote-unquote, imprisoned. Uh, basically, people can knock you out, and they can force-feed you to keep you alive, which is pretty scary, and is, it sounds pretty fun. And uh, it's also used for dinosaurs, which is very interesting, and I'm excited to see how all this works. So now they're going to talk about the tech tree and ingram points. Uh, so as well as getting stat points for leveling, you also find that you receive ingram points. Ingram points are spent on Suedo, uh, how do you say that? I know, I know there's a way to say this. Um, and this is not coming to my head. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, pseudo, pseudo. I think it's pseudo. Pseudo tech tree, and it can determine the knowledge your character has. Everything you spend an ingram point on, you'll learn permanently. You'll have the opportunity to learn a wide variety of ingrams, such as the ability to craft tools, weapons, building structures, saddles, signs, crops, pipes, fridges, turrets, flares, parachutes, notes, clothes armor and well you get the point there are loads of things you can craft too much for one person to handle this is why it's suggested you find a group or a tribe to play with or consider looking for some blueprints and the last question here is what about the alpha the alpha is currently going on and they're receiving lots of feedback they'll still be recruiting more candidates so keep an eye on your emails and be sure to check out the pin topic in general discussion for more details you guys can go check that out if you would like um, I would also like to say a couple things um, about that Jake Kurtz told me, so shout out to him. Uh, it's basically just stuff that uh, he said in here um, it, that's been said before, but I just want to mention in case you guys haven't heard it. So I asked him, I know you, he says he, he's been telling me about it a little bit, he says he can't share details though. So I said, but be, by being very vague, what is your favorite part about the game? And he responds, poo throwing. So poo throwing is in the game. You can pick up human waste and, or even dinosaur waste and throw it at other players. And so far, but that's just a personal dream for a game. No damage points yet, but poo fighting is a thing. That is confirmed, and I'll get a screenshot here uh, for you guys. I also asked him, have you guys taken any community suggestions just to prove to you guys that the community is very involved in this game, and he replies, tons, and will continue. Mod support day one, PvE servers, etc. So at first they were planning just to have PvP servers, which I found very interesting, and now they're going to have PvE servers, and that's very cool. And he also says you'll be able to host your own server, which is really cool, and uh, that was a big one, getting that confirmed. And he says that's kind of important since the community... They'd like to play how they prefer, right? That's it makes sense, and they are they are very smart in doing that. And that's about it for this uh, arc news episode. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can hit 30 likes. I don't know if we can, but I believe in you guys. And if you're new and you want more arc news and also some picks on Minecraft um, gameplay, make sure to subscribe to me. And uh, arc will be coming very soon. I think I'm getting an early code very soon, so maybe videos will come out soon. I'm not sure. But anyways, I will see you guys in the uh, next news episode, or I guess maybe even the game. See you guys there.